Hey everybody, John Finn here, Church Without Walls International, CWOWI.org. I'm going to forego the first minute where I usually encourage you to visit our website and we're a house church network and all that because I, I want to follow up on last week's where I had many people uh, ask me what were the details about Jesus' visitation when he was teaching me about the long-term infirmed or people born with a condition or a chronic condition in their bodies. And so to set the stage, our oldest son, Chris, was born with the umbilical cord around his neck in a slipknot. I'm assuming you watched last week's. Um, and so mentally, he's about four years old. He's in a wheelchair, but he's just happy and friendly. Never met a stranger, never met a, a dog or a cat he didn't like. Um, so, so, and he understands heaven. He knows the Lord. He's had the Lord talk to him. So this particular uh, visitation, <clears throat> he was about 20, 21 years old. Now he's 43 as I'm doing this. Um, but I was on staff with a large church, and during the summer they held a, a thing called Word Explosion, and it was held at the Oral Roberts University's uh, basketball arena. And so a basketball arena means, and if you have church there, it means the basketball floor is covered with carpet and everything for the pulpit and the worship team and all that, and then people sit like in a bowl up around. So it's a little different situation, an arena situation. And so on Tuesday night, the guest minister was having people come up to testify about their healings. And I noted many of their healings that they testified about were, were from injury, uh, back injured in a car accident, uh, you know, ankle twisted, falling off a bicycle, that sort of a thing. And so I pondered, I was thinking, is, is, is healing from injury really in the atonement? I mean, the chastisement of our peace is upon him, and so that's a mental, emotional uh, healing there that's that's there and by stripes we are healed does that cover everything suddenly I saw my angel on the right side of the the platform my eyes open I saw the natural but I also saw him when I when that happens to me like in second king six second king six Elisha and his servant saw both the natural army that was surrounding them and then the heavenly army as well it's just like an overlay is the best way to describe it it's it's two realms existing at once and I just see them both at once so my angel looked at me and he said he said, much of what Jesus healed was injury, and then he was gone. That was Tuesday night. Busy all week long, out the door at 7 a.m., back at midnight. Uh, and Saturday night, however, was a lighter day. I didn't have to be there until uh, one, the afternoon sessions. And that evening, I took Chris to, this, to the concert, and no responsibilities or anything. So we sat together. I had him in his wheelchair, and I was sitting on a folding uh, chair next to him. And in the midst of the, the worship, when it became vertical worship, not about horizontal stuff about, you know, what a worm I was and Jesus saved me, but rather he is worthy of all glory and honor and praise. And when it got vertical, I could see angels ministering to people in the crowd and everything. And if you looked in the natural, it's just me looking around and, and everything. But in the spirit, I, I saw angels. I saw um, things going on. But but I felt the presence of the Lord. And the presence of, of the Lord is like the presence of, that you feel right now in your spirit, that presence you feel 24 seven, but it's just turned up a notch in power and your spirit, my spirit leaps and recognizes him when he's in the, in the area. And so I, I said, Lord, you know, you're around here somewhere, but I can't see you, but I know you're here cause I can feel you. I can feel your presence. And I looked around behind me and I saw the Lord come walking up behind me. Uh, and so I've got Chris on my right side. I've got me sitting in the folding chair and here's Jesus standing on my left side. And he just he just started right in. He said, "Much of what I healed was was injury." I said, "Lord, you didn't you didn't greet me or anything. You're just going to start right in." And he said, "I've been trying to reach you since Tuesday night, but this is the first opportunity you've given me." And so it, it helped elevate in my mind when I receive a revelation or something like that from the Lord. I, he's expecting me to give it the highest uh, the highest priority in my life. So lesson learned there. So. Uh, he said, if you can receive this, uh, for the most part, people think in pictures. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, if I say cat, what do you think of? And immediately uh, the thought and the picture of our cat clipper that we had when I was a kid that was rescued from uh, as a little furry kitten tarball that my had, he had to have all his fur clippered with clippers off of him because he was covered in tar that my brother rescued, and so he was named Clipper. And, and and I told him that, and he said exactly. He said, but other people will th might think of their own cat 
or their grandmother's cat or somebody else's cat or even a lion or a tiger. But the word produces a, a, a picture on the inside of you. It causes a memory. It causes something to, to come up where you see it. I said, okay. And he said, for people who've had long-term, lifelong or chronic conditions, they have no image. They have no picture of what it is like to be whole. When the scripture says, by his stripes you were healed, they have no image, nothing within themselves that defines what that is. And I said, I, and, and he's, he's, again, this is for my, this is for my son, Chris. So it's, it, I hope you understand this isn't, he's not trying to teach doctrinally or anything else, but I've been inquiring about my son who now, you know, at uh, what, 21, 20 years old, something like that at that time, uh, you know, had brain damage and, and cerebral palsy is brain damage during labor or delivery. It's from lack of oxygen or CP, as, as it's called. It's not demonic. It's not anything else. And, and like I said last week, I know the reasons. I know everything about it, so no need to write me. But um, but he says, so for Chris, Chris doesn't have an image of what it's like. He doesn't have a memory of what it's like to be whole. So the words, be healed, or by his stripes, you were healed, mean nothing to him. It doesn't produce anything in him. And I said, could you give me you know, some, some chapters and verses on these? And he said, when... Noah built the ark. He received instructions on the length and the width and three decks and much more detail so that he had a picture of what he was to build. When And, and he said, when I talked to Abram and brought him in, this is Genesis 15, brought him out to see the stars and took him up to see the stars, I said, count them. See if you can count them. That's how many your, your offspring will be. And he, he said it produced an image in him. And he talked about Moses and his hand in and out, the, his staff being thrown down, turned into a snake and picked it up and it became uh, nor a stick again and things of that nature. And then he switched. He said, I'll give you a, another example. The woman with the issue of blood in Mark 5. And, and I said that was a medical condition. She said it was chronic. She'd had it 12 years and she was injured by the medical profession of her day. And she got worse and worse. And the text says, and I know it's it's in like verse Mark 5, 27, when she heard it was Jesus, she said, all I have to do is touch his clothes and I'll be whole. And he asked me, he said, when, when it says she, when she heard of Jesus, what do you suppose that did within her? What was, what did that mean? And I said, well, your fame and the story of all the the testimonies of all the healings and deliverances, I mean, even the rulers knew about you. So it had to be widespread throughout every community. And he said, exactly. He said, she heard multiple reports of healings, multiple testimonies. And that built within her the, uh, the image of what it was like to have been whole because she knew healing. She knew what it was like to be whole. And he said, when you lay hands on yourself and command your, your ankle to, to stop hurting, or you command a fever to go away, you know what it's like to be restored to wholeness because you live in wholeness. And uh, I asked for another example, and, and he said, the man with the withered arm, Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, he, he, I said, Is that, was that an injury? And he said, the fact it states it was withered tells you that it was at one time whole, but he did receive an injury and it became atrophied. And he said, do you, he said, do you understand? I, I told him to stretch forth his arm, to put it out there. He said, remember what I told you years earlier? And this was interesting because years, years earlier, we were thinking about Chris receiving physical therapy and occupational therapy and speech therapy. And were the therapies contrary to our faith? Was it wrong to go to a doctor to physical therapy because we were trusting the Lord, believing the Lord for, for his healing? And he said, I, you know, I told you at the time that it's not contrary to your faith for healing functions in, in the flow of or therapy functions with, and cooperates with me in healing in that it causes the body or the body part to move as it once had which means that they, or in, and as it should. And so it means that it was very much like that with the man with the withered arm. And, but he had an image of what it was like to be whole. So anyway, the, the gist of I'm getting to, the, that's the core of it right there, was he, he talked about Chris, he talked about the, the, the picture of what it is to be by his stripes you were healed. And Chris has seen people, he saw kids running you know, on TV, and he told me one day, he said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to run like that. And he's made the statement just, 
you know, just unprovoked, unsolicited, he's made the statement, when I get to heaven, no wheelchair. And the Lord has talked to him. He came crawling down the hall one day. He was, and he said, Dad, Dad, know what Jesus told me? Jesus said to me, Jesus said, he's going to walk through the mountains with me. Yep, that's what he said. All right. He's going to walk through the mountains with me. That's what he, and just Chris was giggling. He was so happy. He said, that's what Jesus said. So Chris has been set on heaven ever since. That's the image he has, is that that's the, something that he can think forward to. But he can't, he, he doesn't have the ability to look back and, and in his brain damage to understand that something that happened 2,000 years ago applies to him today. The bridge in those things for a person of, of average intelligence, of unhindered intelligence, uh, is that do you know what it's like? Can you bring that memory up of what it was like before you had the condition? And that's where faith gets in. That's where where see, what most people do is they look at 1 Peter 2.24 and say, by his stripes I was healed. But there's nothing in that that says that 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 is captured with it that is part of it that says what that healing looks like. The woman with the issue of blood in Mark five, when she heard of Jesus, it was combined with she knew what it was like to be whole. She knew what she wanted. She wanted that condition to be healed, and she she had heard the testimonies, so she had that image going in, in her mind. Uh, Jesus during the the visitation was much longer. He, he went into to other things like blind Bartimaeus and, and uh, people who believed in him as son of David, as the Messiah, what that did within them. But it all involved the idea that they had an idea of what Messiah would do, what he was about. And so my encouragement to you, if you've got a chronic condition, long-term condition, to, to take that lesson that pertains to my son and like the woman with the issue of blood who knew what it was like to be whole. Um, and, and the others that didn't know, um, the man that had been there for 38 years, uh, things of that nature. He explained, you know, why he asked people, he told people to take up their bed and walk. It involved their part of it to, to, to get them to see what wholeness was, to cause it all to gel within them, that they could do that. And, uh, and so what I encourage you to do is just go back to the times in your memory, to the time when you were whole. Or get alone with the Lord, commune with the Lord, let him build that picture within you. If you have a lifelong condition and you want to be healed of it and you're asking the Lord, it takes revelation. The whole kingdom of heaven functions by revelation. The woman with the issue of blood had a revelation when she heard of Jesus. She heard the testimonies and she communed with the Lord and, and she had that revelation uh, from the Father, and faith comes from that revelation. You know, Noah didn't just decide to build a boat. He received a revelation about the boat. Then the Lord really uh, figuratively painted him a picture, you know, spoke to him a picture of what it should look like. And Abraham uh, believed the Lord after he had seen the picture of all the stars and, and was told. That's Genesis 15. Look it up. The Lord brought him forth abroad. The Lord God, specifically, that's Christ in the Old Testament. And and that image is what helped why it says it was counted in for righteousness. He had something to look at and to hold on to. Don't conjure it up yourself. I'm telling you that this is something where you commune with the Father, you commune with the Lord, you spend time there, let him build that image in you. You do your part. You think of the memory of what it was like to be whole. Think about how that, that condition began in you and, and, and reject it and realize that it's like, hold it, hold it. I, you know, I don't have to have this in my body. This has no place being in me. This is no authority here. And, and you, you, you commune with the father and spend time at it. And then gradually that faith, that image will, will build and you will know from the inside out, you have a revelation that by stripes you were healed. Um, my wife had a horrible accident in 1980, in June of 1980 and, and uh, crushed the right side of her face, fell through a window, crushed the right side of her face, skull fractures. The, the doctor, when he put her back together with plastic and wire and bone pieces that were left over, after she, she crushed her eye socket, skull fractures, cheekbone was destroyed, he put her back together and he said she, she's gonna be like a stroke victim with palsy on, the, on her right side, blurred vision, double vision, a burning sensation. You, she, she shattered the nerves. The nerves, you know, don't grow back. You know, all this horrible stuff. We rejected it. And and I brought her tapes of healing and healing scriptures. And we laid hands on her one time and said, by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. So in the name of Jesus, you be healed. Nerves be healed. And then we worshiped. From that point on, all we did was worship. 
And to Barb's credit, amazing, amazing woman, amazing person. Within seven days, she started to get feeling back in her face. And within 30 days, she was completely normal. And the, 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 you know, the surgeon couldn't figure it out. He didn't know what he did, but, but we know what it was. But she had that image and the word of God helped build that and reaffirm that she knew what it was like to be whole. So anyway, I hope this has been a blessing to you. Um, that, that's a, a part of the biggest part of what he shared about my own son who was born with brain damage and, and because of the mental retardation involved being a four year old, he's, he's doesn't have the ability to think in terms of what time and space mean and all of that, but he can grasp the idea that there is a heaven and he's going to be whole and he's going to run and there won't be any wheelchair and, and all of that. That's what he can grasp. So that's where his faith is. And we still, when he's at home and every Friday night, when he's at home and I close the door, I say, by his stripes. And Chris says, I was healed. But the understanding there isn't fully there. My hope is one day it will be. But for now, it's not. And uh, so we go on. We love the Lord. And the Lord does gracious things for him. All right. Talk to you later. Hope this has been a blessing. C-W-O-W-I dot O-R-G.